Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Topic Controller. Don't ask me why I look like this. I don't know what I was thinking when I designed this Minecraft skin. Have you ever heard of the Dream SMP? I mean, it's not, it's not all that popular. It's just a little Minecraft server with a couple small content creators. You know, no one too big, but some people have heard about it. On the Dream SMP, there is this one building. Uh, it's a prison. It's credited as being inescapable, supposedly. So, here's the thing. It's not an escape. It is very clearly not an escapable. There are plenty of ways to break out of it. it. Sure, it's difficult to escape, but there are plenty of ways to break out of it. So, one guy decided, you know, I'm gonna make a prison that is even more escapable. And he called it Poseidon's Vault. Poseidon's Vault, it's a similar prison to Pandora's Vault. It is, I'd say, a little bit better, a little bit harder to escape from. That, that said, it's not inescapable. People have already figured out how to escape from it. Yeah, so neither of those are truly inescapable prisons. So I thought, huh, what if I tried to make an inescapable prison? How would that work out? And so, I began thinking, what are Pandora's Vault and Poseidon's Vault doing wrong? Well, number one, what they're doing wrong is they... The blocks that they're using are all breakable. It may take quite a lot of time, considering the Elder Guardians, but they're still breakable. If you just set up a bot to constantly mine obsidian, even with Mining Fatigue 3, eventually you'll get through the obsidian. So, then I thought to myself, what block in Minecraft is unbreakable? Bedrock. You can't break it and survive. Only in the start, right? Well, here's the thing. It's not actually. There are machines, redstone machines, that you can use to delete the bedrock. So, what I was thinking is, how can I use that? And I came up with a little design. Basically, you want to use your bedrock deleting machine to dig out a little hole. It can be as large as you want, but it needs to be a minimum of two blocks deep. Ignore this nether rack. Just find a spot where you can dig out a hole that's a minimum of two blocks deep and has bedrock on all sides on the nether ceiling. You can get to the nether ceiling in survival. There are plenty of guides on how to do that. There are also plenty of guides on how to make the bedrock deleting machine if you want to know how to do that. If you just dig out a little hole, like so, and ignore the nether rack, you just need you need to find a good area where there's no nether rack. You dig out a little hole like this. Right now, this is inescapable in survival unless they have blocks, because they can't jump past this. It's not inescapable because a person can come and give them some blocks, but it's inescapable for a person without any friends. So then I thought to myself, all right, so they can't go this way, this way, this way, or this way, and they can't go that way for sure. All of that is completely blocked off. The only way they can go is up, and they need blocks to do that. But someone can come and get them blocks, right? So I thought to myself, how can we prevent someone from giving them blocks? And I came up with an idea. See, we're building in the nether because that's where we need the bedrock. You, you may notice this very large structure. We'll get to that in a moment. But the first thing that I thought of is, well, why can't we just cover it with obsidian? The reason we can't do that is because the obsidian, once a person breaks it, and they can break it no matter how long it takes, if they can break it, it is possible to escape. Once a person breaks it, the obsidian doesn't come back. It's gone forever. So, what we need is a way to get a self-replenishing wall. Enter the infinite basalt generator. It's a relatively simple design. Just some soul soil, some blue ice, and then above that, no matter how many times I break it, it will always come back. So, then, all you need to do is hook up a little bit of a piston. Then you just need to get a simple, very simple, redstone clock going. You can do that with just redstone dust, or redstone torch, or redstone comparator, and any block of your choice. You can use granite for this example. And then a redstone torch, redstone comparator, redstone dust. Set this to subtract. It has to be on subtract, otherwise it doesn't work. And it'll keep replenishing the salt. 
Now I'm gonna stop that before it messes up my pre-existing machine. But right here, I have a line of those, and they're constantly firing. And it's just a line of infinite basalt generators with pistons. And you can just make a flat sheet of self-regenerating basalt. And that's what I've done here with these little these little infinite basalt generators. So I'm going, I'm going to squish myself on here. And that obsidian is just so that I can show you. I dug out a little root by three cell. You can do that in survival using the bedrock deleting machine. And then I've got some obsidian here. It's just a placeholder. And then above this is the basalt. If I try to break it, it regenerates. I have to find another right pickaxe right here. So I'll switch to survival. Even with an efficiently found another right pickaxe, I can't get through this. It just keeps regenerating. So yeah, the chances of a person getting through that, very low as is. But it's still possible, right? So, I decided, let's make it a little bit taller. I've got numerous layers of constantly self-regenerating basalt, and then spaced in between them is a two block thick layer of obsidian. And the obsidian is there so people can't just blow up the basalt, but it also serves as an extra precaution against people trying to mine through the basalt. Right here, right above the basalt, let me go to survival mode. I'm just gonna dig straight down, and I'm gonna demonstrate something here. Look at this. So right here, as you can see, every time the basalt gets pushed in, my breaking progress on the obsidian is reset. So I have to start breaking the obsidian from scratch all over again every time the basalt hits. Meaning I'm never really going to be able to break this obsidian. But yeah, as you can see, I've got a bunch of pistons hooked up to a redstone clock and a bunch of infinite basalt generators constantly generating basalt, which is then pushed out across this sheet of basalt so that it's constantly regenerating. I would say, pretty good design. Pretty good design. So that's all well and good, right? That's, that's all well and good. Here's the thing. I wanted more. Like, for example, Pandora's Vault. You got the one cell. It's all obsidian. That's good and all. That's cool. But, like, is it really enough? You're not there for just the one simple obsidian cell. That just doesn't look cool. You want all sorts of redstone contraptions throughout the entire prison. So, I decided to add in three additional doors. I've got a little door right here. And then if I flick this lever... Little spiral opening door. And then I hop down here. Ignore the fall damage. These are keycard readers. Basically, what you do is you take this book, and it has to be the um, it has to be the unread version because that otherwise it will add a tag. And the, so the red version, if you read it once, even once, it doesn't work. So I don't. I've just put password placeholder in here. You can put whatever you want in there. But yeah, like see, four tags three tags, so the red version of the book isn't going to work. So anyway, what you are going to want to do to unlock something is you want to plop one book in, press the button, and you heard some pistons moving around, and then it popped up right through here. And let's uh, take a look at this. Looks kind of similar to the other gate there, the spiral gate. Except this one looks a little different, and it works a little different. Basically, you want to press this button for the upper gate. That is going to retract the little thing. It's a little platform on a flying machine. And I can show you what the flying machine looks like real quick. To sum it down is these fire, which pushes the platform forward, and then these fire, which pushes the machine forward, and then this pulls this along to repeat the process kind of set up like it set it up like an airlock system where the top gate would open and the visitor would walk down here and then the top gate would close and then the bottom gate would open so yeah the visitor would go down here and then this top gate would close you can see so then I'm going to and 
the lower gate. As you can see, it just slides on out. Yeah, so now you're on the basalt. No one's allowed to go past the basalt, except for the warden who uses a enderpearl station chamber located near the bottom. There's not going to be any pathway to the bottom, and that's just in the interest of safety so that the prisoner can't get through that passageway. Let me go into spectator mode. You'll see quite a long trip of basalt and obsidian until you eventually get down here into the prisoner's cell, and they cannot do anything. They can't escape. So yeah, uh, that is the prison. I would not say it's complete. I still want to add more to the prison because, well, it'll just make it look cooler. This, it's kind of boring. It's three doors. Three doors, sure, it's cool and all, but it's not that much. So I am going to leave that decision up to all of you. I would like to hear your suggestions for how I build the prison, what additional features I add in the comments below. Furthermore, uh, Hades, or furthermore, Pandora's Vault and Poseidon's Vault, those are all pretty cool names. My prison doesn't even have a name at all, let alone a cool one. So I'm going to leave naming ideas up to you. And while you're down there, if you're feeling generous, you might even decide to give the video a like. And if you're feeling super generous, you may have even hit the subscribe button. Ooh. I would like to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.